uh, Dabje here. Welcome to my channel. This is actually something new. I'm about to embark on a new uh, sort of adventure or endeavor here on my on my workshop uh, worktop. Uh, guitar maintenance. I've never done this before. Actually, I, I have a, a couple of new acquisitions here uh, connected with this. First of all, I got a neck rest. I could have easily made something out of a block of foam or something, but they don't cost a lot. And I was getting something else from a guitar shop anyway, namely these tools. These are not, I mean, I'm in, I'm in Europe, I'm in Denmark. So uh, the fact that most guitars have uh, inch uh, screws and nuts and, and all that means my standard tools that I have don't work so I had to buy some some special tools so so I got this which is a 5 16 uh, socket wrench you need that for the truss rod adjustment and I also got this which I actually I'm not sure I'll need it on this guitar but it's another one of my one of those special tools that you're going to need I'm gonna need this for at least one maybe several of my other guitars 0.05 inch uh, hex key these are the special tools that, I'm, that I had to get to get into this. And, and while I was getting those, I just, I took that, uh, I, I bought that block too, because it didn't cost that much. Now, like I said, the, the little pin key here, I'm not going to need that for this guitar. I, at least nothing that I've seen. I'm going to just put that off to the side. But the first thing I need to do, uh, and what actually prompted me to get into this, is I am pretty darn sure that this I, actually I know that this neck needs adjusting now this is not surprising uh, the guitar itself of course is old uh, it's late 60s or early 70s is what I could have been able to find out uh, I've tried searching you uh, the you know the, describing it and I and also the serial number and I can't find out exactly when this is from or what kind of model it is but it's a little bit special the p90 soap bar uh, pickups on it is not that you don't see that a lot on on SGs, but more more to the point in terms of why it needs adjusting, it's at least twenty years, probably twenty five years since this was in the shop and and had an adjustment. I haven't I haven't had this at a tech since I performed and I didn't I stopped performing right around the time when my daughter was born and she's twenty three. So so yeah, I'm pretty sure. This thing needs adjusting, and and I think if I just, yeah, uh, I should probably explain. I haven't done this before. Like I said, it's my first time. It's a new endeavor, so I've been doing some research, trying to find out how you do this, and it doesn't seem to be that complicated. So that was, you know, part of what prompted me to get those tools and start doing it was finding out how this works. And one of the things that I found out real early or very quickly is you can find out an easy way to see if your if your guitar needs adjusting is you hold actually there's a common trick that I see is putting a capo on the first fret and then fingering some say the 12th or 17th some say the last fret but somewhere up here and then I can basically just eyeball it actually if I get something white to go behind this, I don't. I have no illusion that you can see this on camera, but I can most certainly see it, and you can hear it. That's the string slamming down, because the the, the neck is backbowed by a lot. I mean, just by eye, I don't have uh, seekers for this, but just by eye, I'm gonna say it's close to a millimeter. It's a lot. Uh, it's a lot in terms of action. And playability but it's not actually that much it's it's not you know critical it's not it's not like you can't do anything about it because you can and like I said is supposedly it isn't that hard I'm, I'm just gonna jump into it right so so uh, for this guitar it's actually very easy to adjust it has uh, the little plate here which before I knew this the the, the technicalities of guitars I thought I always thought this this plate here was decorative that it was so, some sort of convention, but it covers the uh, the truss rod adjustment nut. I just got a, a little bin for the screws there, uh, and also yeah, real practical. There's a there's a 
a Phillips screw, uh, screwdriver on the end of this, obviously for this purpose. Getting the, the cover off. Maybe I should flip this around just for, for visibility. There you go, I think you can see that. There's the nut and, the, and the, this uh, wrench thing here goes over that and you adjust. I don't think I need the paper just now. Just put that away. Of course, you can also see this. Look at how dirty it is. I'm not exactly sure what this is, but my guess is it's a polishing agent. At some point, I've had the strings off and I've polished. I've used a polishing or someone has used a polishing agent on the, on the headstock without taking off this little cover plate. Also, a little interesting thing here that you can see. I thought this might help me identify the model, but it didn't. Uh, but it has a very uh, peculiar style of logo. It's clearly inset in a very rough shape and then painted to produce the Gibson logo as opposed to the, the pearl uh, or whatever it is, mother of pearl or this material being cut exactly in the shape of the letters. It's just cut roughly and then the letters are painting in, painted in. It's a little funny. But anyway... To adjust the truss rod or to adjust the neck for, to get rid of this, obviously there's too much dis distance in the middle. Obviously in order to fix this, which is, I understand is called, this is called relief and that's, that's too much relief, at least for my taste anyway. Uh, and to fix that, what I need to do is bow the neck backwards. And I actually, doing research, I took some notes I discovered that the, the SG comes with a single action truss rod. I won't go into that. You can Google it, but it does. Uh, first of all, oh, second of all, I saw some, uh, some advice that says, take that, the, this is called an acorn nut, take that off and lubricate the thing before adjusting. So maybe I should do that first. It actually seems like I can do this without relieving the string tension, which is fine. I think, because from my understanding, well, obviously part of the issue of where this the neck goes is the string tension. There's hundreds of pounds of tension uh, from the strings when they're in tune. So, uh, so it, it plays a role. Taking the strings off to adjust means putting them back on and tuning just to see how your adjustment was going. So leaving them on, I think is, uh, I think is gonna make my life a little easier. Uh, I can see that there's a trick that's been employed here, which I've also read about. I don't know if you can see there's a, um, a mark here. Someone took a, a pen or something and put a mark on it. And that's a little trick that I've read about. You do that to see how far, so you can keep an eye on how far you are turning. Uh, another thing that I read about, another tip that I found was use Vaseline for lubrication. So, so sure, why not? I'm gonna use a little a little wooden stick here, just so that I don't get too much uh, Vaseline or petroleum jelly, as it's called, all over my fingers, and then put it all over the, the thing here. So, and also the advice was put some put some Vaseline on the on the thread and on the base plate. There's a there's a, a like a washer at the base there. Put some some lubricant on that. Actually, you know what? I'll just get. See, there's some dirt and stuff in here. See, stuff is coming out of here. Unbelievable. Never ceases to amaze me uh, how dirty, un, uh, how dirty things can get in un, in places you don't imagine. Have you tried taking apart? your laptop and looking at the fans, those things are filthy. Anyway, that's the lubrication. And I'll just see if I can slip this back on. Yeah, it definitely runs easy. See if I can, if it, yeah, now it's set against the plate, which is what it's supposed to be. And then I can't actually see the mark uh, you know what? I want to make sure I can see, so I'm going to make my own mark. I'm going to take a little bit of red. I'm going to make a red mark. 
so that I can see my mark and I don't get confused. And in order to back bow it on a single action truss rod like this, I have to tighten it and it's perfectly normal. So it's, you know, lefty loosey and so forth, so, so on and so forth. And I'm gonna go, that's about an eighth of a turn. So that gives me about a quarter of a turn. And maybe there, three eighths or something like that. I don't know, I'm not good with fractions. But it's still, definitely still slamming. So I'll give it, oops, give it another bit here. It is definitely slamming less. Can you hear that? Just a little bit there. Slamming less. I think I prefer my, my absolutely no slamming. I prefer, I mean, some guitarists like a little bit of relief. I think I prefer my guitars to be completely straight. Maybe the slightest bit of slam. I'm just going to give it like this much. <laughs> what was that? A sixteenth of a turn. Uh, I'm just gonna see if I can if I can eyeball this. I put the guitar like this. It's an, a piece of advice I've seen. To the naked eye, this is straight as an arrow. There's no bus, so I didn't get it too close. I think that's perfect. I actually think that's lovely. So for all intents and purposes, I have now straightened the neck of my guitar. So that's it. Uh, more things are going to happen to this guitar. Amongst those things, it needs to be cleaned up. Uh, but there you go. This is how a beginner goes about his first uh, truss rod adjustment. Thank you for all the advice to everyone. I'll leave some links in the thing below from where I found uh, found information that was helpful to me. And uh, ha happy making and happy guitar adjusting. Thanks for dropping by. I'll see you next time. Bye.